Do you want to learn more about the Tinder algorithm to improve your account? Do you want to learn more about the algorithms that control most of what we see and therefore influence what we think, yet we know very little about? I was wondering to myself the other night, why is my Tinder account not getting any likes? And then I thought, I'll blame it on the Tinder algorithm. That's the source of my problems. However, I can't just blame all my problems on outside factors. It's probably a combination of the Tinder algorithm and the bathroom selfies. So after I fix my profile, I want to have some control over how the Tinder algorithm shows me to other people. But I gotta pay for that. So I tried to do some research on the Tinder algorithm, and I found these Tinder experiments on YouTube. But all those really showed me was, Tinder sure does love hot people, and that wasn't very helpful. So I decided to run my own Tinder experiment using the scientific method and proper controls. Now, in order to run an experiment, I had to A, figure out what exactly I wanted to test on Tinder, and B, control all the other variables that I'm not testing to make sure they're constant. To start, the things I wanted to know about Tinder were how things like the number of swipes you received affects your showing on Tinder, or the number of dislikes you received affects it, or how little hobbies you put at the bottom of your profile affect a match, or if they do at all. Now, how exactly am I gonna do all this? Well, naturally, I'm gonna need a bunch of accounts that I can test on, and I'm gonna need to put them somewhere. And what better place to put them than at the Oceanic Pool of Inaccessibility, otherwise known as Point Nemo. It is the most inaccessible place on the planet. Sometimes the closest people to the point are on the ISS. What is that you say? I'm only one person. How can I have a bunch of accounts? Well, I can't tell you that because if I did, Tinder's lawyers would come busting down my door, shoving cease and desist letters through every crack in my house like the letter scene from Harry Potter when he gets into Hogwarts. Now, despite saying I had to control the experiment in every way, I did have a little fun when I was making the accounts. I may or may not have made all the accounts American Revolutionary War soldiers and also a 7-Eleven, and also the Pacific Garbage Patch. Now that I've actually got all the accounts, I need to stop procrastinating and run the experiment. Since I'm comparing the number of likes an account receives versus how soon it's shown to other people, I need to keep track of the number of right and left swipes an account receives. But I'm not gonna do all that by myself, so I wrote a program to do that for me. Essentially, this program takes a screenshot of the screen, reads what's on it, interprets the text, and determines which account is on the screen. Also, I did all that screen reading stuff because it's easier than working with HTML and JavaScript. Then, it sees how many likes the account has so far and figures out whether it should dislike it or like it based on the number of likes the account is determined to receive overall. Essentially, each account is only getting a certain number of likes throughout the experiment, so some accounts will be more liked than others, and I can see how those accounts compare to each other. And now that all that's finally done, I can run the experiment. The experiment went great! No, it went terrible. I was expecting Tinder to show me all the available profiles, but no, it usually stopped around six. Even if there are more people available to match with in the area, Tinder just didn't show me them. Also, three of my accounts got banned because they were showing suspicious activity. I mean, what's suspicious about being in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? But despite all the setbacks, I was able to get enough data to make some interesting observations. First off, as you probably expected, being more liked as a profile makes you more likely to be shown first, or at least sooner. But also, weirdly, if you didn't have very many likes at all, you were also likely to be shown sooner, but only in between the liked profiles. And I don't mean like you're an average profile, I mean like if you have nine dislikes and one like. In fact, the average profiles were barely represented at all. It is possible that the order I made the accounts appear in the area affected the outcome of the results, but I have no way of testing that. If you like analyzing things, I'm leaving a link in the description to the raw data from the experiment, 
so you can find your own conclusions. So to be brief, the strongest conclusions I could find were if you have a lot of likes, Tinder will show you much sooner than other people. However, if you also have an extremely low like to dislike ratio, Tinder will also show you near the front, but in between the accounts of the really liked people. Also, if Tinder says you have run out of accounts in your area, that may not be true. Tinder may just not be showing you anyone because they want you to put your phone down or something. And last, I'd take my results with a grain of salt because this was a pretty messy experiment. I'd need a lot more time, money, and accounts to actually have solid conclusions. But I'm also never gonna do this again because making a bunch of accounts was the biggest pain in the butt I have ever. Now that this experiment is all said and done, I can release these accounts back into their natural habitats. The American Continental Army will be released into London. The British soldiers will be released into Washington, D.C., and the Pacific Garbage Patch and the 7-Eleven will be released upon the Tinder headquarters, where they will live out their lives in getting banned, probably.